Hi, and welcome to Macro World, right here on Visual Art Photography Tutorials. Well, as you can tell by the title, Macro World, we're going to be doing some macro photography today. And you know, one of the most common questions I get is, Ray, what do you use for your macro photography? How do you make the images that you do? Well, you know, I have my own equipment. It's over here. We're going to go through it really, really quickly. But I think it's really important to know that you can do macro photography with all kinds of different setups. So my setup doesn't isn't necessarily the best setup. It's the one that I use. You can have all kinds of different variations on it. Um, macro lens, 100 millimeter macro lens. That's what I use now. For many years, I was using a different setup, but that's what I use currently. I also sometimes like to pop some flash into my work. So I just recently got this, which is uh, a macro ring flash. You can use that. That sometimes helps. Uh, sometimes you can use just a basic flash. That works too. And in combination with that, often I use uh, it off camera. So I use this uh, cord to go along with that. And also, as you know from past videos with a lot of my photography, I like using a remote cable release that just calms down uh, the camera. And you really have to do that when you're doing macro photography. Everything is very, very critical. That's my setup. Uh, there are are all different other kinds of ways to do macro photography, including reversing a lens on your camera with uh, using a reversal ring, things like that. You can do it that way. Uh, all kinds of different macro lenses. You can even have a lens that isn't really specifically a macro lens, but something that can get you kind of close. And then in post-production, you can always crop that a little bit and it will appear that you're moving a little bit closer than you actually are. So all kinds of different ways to do macro photography. Anyway, today we're going to be doing Mushrooms. I almost forgot another key component of my macro photography is often the use of extension tubes. These ones from Kenko, and they work really well in combination with my macro uh, lenses. Okay. Uh, comments and questions can be addressed down below as usual. Uh, let's get going on our macro photography mushrooms today. And you're going to see there are lots of different ways to shoot mushrooms. And we're lucky these days because we don't have to uh, use a right angle finder or put our eye down to the viewfinder. All we have to do is look through the LCD screen. So our life is kind of easy that way. There are a couple of approaches that we can use when we're uh, trying to photograph mushrooms. And as you could see from what we were just looking at, we were in the backyard. So we're going to start off in the backyard. You'd be surprised what you may be able to find. And then we're going to go off and we're going to show you what you can get in the forest and the woods, which is probably the best place to be. But we started off in the backyard and we got something like this. Now, this was not acceptable. I'm showing you this to show you that if this doesn't work out, you can always try something different and just shoot the top of the organism. And here you have a, a very interesting pattern and it becomes very abstract. And you know how we, we kind of like to look at abstract things. So there's that. But we can go to another part of the backyard and you see something like this. Now, it should be noted that it takes a lot of moisture to create mushrooms. And the reason why I'm getting mushrooms in my backyard this year as opposed to some other years is because we've had a lot of rain. Uh, so, hey, not so bad. I'm going to take advantage of it. But when you look at this, there's nothing special going on, that's for sure. So you have to get down low. And you see those gills up there? Well, that's what you want to focus on. And you get something like this. All of a sudden, you've created something in a completely different world. You've gone from this, which is basically nothing much, to something that is really special. It's almost like a little bit of a wonderland. And this is shot at an aperture of f11. So, so far we know that we have to get down low if we want to uh, capture something that's a little bit special. You can also shoot the tops of the mushrooms if there's nothing interesting going on down below. Uh, a small aperture sometimes really works as well. Now this was f11 as I said. The next one is at f16 but I've moved in closer and I focused on those gills because let's face it that's probably the most interesting part of this particular kind of mushroom. The next one, aperture of f8 and it almost makes it a little bit surreal because now you've lost its environment and you're just right on the gills. And it's, again, a little bit abstract. Even more so at wide open, at f2.8. So you've gone from this 
which shows a little bit of the environment to this. But now, what about if you want to show all the environment? Okay, now for me, that's a little bit messy. Because if I want to show all of the environment, what I do is I back off and I show you a little bit more of what's around it. But when I'm in this close, I think I almost like that. It's kind of, you're not quite sure what it is. But again, as always, as you've seen in my tutorials, it is to taste. Okay, this is shot at F16, and this is what I mean by backing off a little bit. You see the environment, um, and I think it kind of works. But you can also make it surreal again. F2.8 is the aperture, and now you've got something completely different. It's to taste. Now, uh, a little side note here, as we look at some of these images, if you're lying down on the ground, and if it is a little bit of wet, uh, a little wet, you may want to use some kind of a protector below you so that you don't get wet, maybe even something underneath your camera. Now, because there are many ways to do this, you can shoot from a tripod, maybe a tabletop tripod, or if your tripod goes down really low, you can do that. But I shot this just lying the camera down on the ground. And I've really gotten into that. I, I, when I first started off doing this kind of photography years ago, I always had a tripod and I actually reversed the, uh, the center column and all that kind of thing. But um, as I've moved along, I've changed. And uh, I just lay the camera on the ground. Now here's one, as we get out of the backyard and we move up into the, into the forest and into the woods, you can really get some interesting shots here. Now, for this particular one, Two things come to mind. One, I used some fill flash, all right? I used, I popped some flash into this. It wasn't full power. I used it at about one and a half uh, stops less, okay? Minus two, one and a half stops uh, flash compensation, all right? And that was so that um, the background would be the way it should be, and I would have enough light going in underneath these mushrooms, which, you know, underneath it was very, very dark. And if I hadn't popped some flash in there, it would have been a little bit difficult to see all those beautiful gills there. Now, the other thing that we have to be concerned with when we're shooting this kind of thing is these mushrooms were in the shade and you see in the background how sunny it is. You have to be really careful about that because what happens is if you don't, uh, if you aren't careful about the background, you're going to have, it, it's going to be way too bright and your eye always wants to go to something bright something shiny, something bright in the background. So you're going to lose uh, the attention of the viewer on what you're trying to show them, which is the mushrooms here. So you have to be really careful to try to balance out the background. A red cap sort of mushroom, you find these in the woods too, if you look carefully. And you see a lot of the environment around it, but this brings about another thing. And we like to call it gardening. Don't be afraid to, um, you know, pull out pieces of grass or pieces of plants or whatever may be obstructing the view of the mushroom. And you may want, want to take everything out because you, you do want to have a little bit of an environment. I pulled some things out. I left a few things in. It's kind of like a balance, again, to taste. And you do it that way. Different kinds of uh, mushrooms and toadstools and things that you'll find in the forest. Always a really good time to go in the summertime and even better in the fall, lots of moisture. Go after it rains of, uh, for a day or two and you'll be surprised what you may find on the forest floor. Again, I think they call these red bonnet mushrooms or something like that. And you see this bokeh in the background. Now, often when you shoot uh, with your lens wide open, you would have nice round uh, splotches there, but we don't have that today because we shot this at f16, so the aperture is very small, and you actually see uh, the aperture and the way it looks there. But that's a, a pretty nice effect. It's it's just adding a little bit of something to the background. Chanterelle mushroom on the forest floor, and uh, again I used a bit of fill flash for this because it was kind of dark there in in this particular part of the forest, and I wanted to highlight the gills of this particular mushroom. So I popped a little fill flash in there. Again, about minus one and a half stops flash compensation. And then to close it out, you just never know what you may find under a mushroom. So be careful. So uh, a little specialized equipment can help. Uh, getting down low can certainly help and a good dose of imagination goes a long way. That's Macro World for today. I'm Ray Scott, and remember, until next time, 
it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.